Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Liz and I'm so happy to welcome you back to my channel. I'm super excited for some stuff that we've got going on and coming up in the next week. Um, this week we just had a soft launch. I say we, like it's the royal we. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this week we just had the soft launch of the Way of Love series, which is short, brief, little sort of poetic meditations on the seven key elements of the spiritual life. Um, and who decides what the seven key elements of the spiritual life are? <laughs> My presiding bishop. He's pretty awesome. His name's Michael Curry. He's really quite with it. And he came up with these seven notions. I say he came up, he distilled, like they're out there in every single religion. And he has invited everybody in the Episcopal Church, I'm a priest in the Episcopal Church, to like go forth and create resources for people to use. So here's my effort. So my Way of Love series, I'm going to be doing one update every day. Meh, for now, I'll be doing it at 5 p.m. And they're going to be brief little meditations to help you on your way. Are they explicitly Christian? Are they going to get all Christian up in your grill? Uh, not really, not all of them, not explicitly, um, because I'm really here to help you in your spiritual path. My flavor is Christianity, but yours doesn't need to be. So that's going on and I'm super excited about that. I also have posted my fifth guided meditation and I just recorded the sixth one and I am weirdly excited about the sixth guided meditation because it is actually based on the most bizarre exercise I ever learned in seminary. And that is rat face, splat face. And the whole point of rat face, splat face is to limber up your face so that when you are speaking in public, you have affect, you have movement. And it's really kind of, not that they quite use these words, it's kind of to get you out of resting bitch face. Now, I'm not accusing you of having resting bitch face, but I have resting bitch face. And I come by it honestly because my mother had resting bitch face and both of my sisters do. And in case you live under a rock, resting bitch face is feeling totally calm and happy inside and looking like this. And God help you if you have a negative thought that goes flitting across your brain, like, wow, you just said something really stupid because then you end up looking like this. I know, it's bizarre. So uh, the, the guided meditation is actually all about resting your face truly and completely by dancing the hell out of it and then resting back into happiness. So I'm excited about that. Um, and for now, I'm just going to hang on to these two series, The Guided Meditation and The Way of Love, with occasional updates and spoilers, uh, because that is what uh, the pace of my life and my work will allow. But I'm really enjoying them so far, and I hope you are too. So now we come to the Q&A spoiler alert section of this video. And if you're wondering to yourself, how do I get to ask questions and have them answered in the next video? I'm glad you asked that question. The way you can ask questions is either right down below here, this video in the comments, or if that doesn't quite work for you, um, and you are a reader of Loki of Midgard, you can always ask me questions in the comments after any chapter or at the end of the story. And I will make a list of them and answer, you know, as many as I feel I can here. So here we go. Winnie wants to know, well, Winnie wants to know many things, but here are the ones I'm going to answer. Um, what is the deal with Oidas and a second millstone? Um, you're going to find that out really soon. What is the ETA on the next chapter? That would be tomorrow. Um, a man that's not pushy, where can I find one or possibly get my own Loki? You know, good luck on that one. It's not that they're rare, but you do have to go sorting through. Uh, I found one and I'm not sharing. 
Loki losing the gates. Is this a major plot point? Well, it could be. And we'll just have to see how that develops. Um, Oidus's radical nonviolence. What the actual fuck? Granted, that's my translation. Winnie didn't swear in her comment. Um, Oidus and her radical nonviolence. The thing about radical nonviolence is that if you, in fact, are not radically nonviolent and you're listening to someone who is radically nonviolent, they're not going to make sense to you. And that's the fun and anguish of really talking deeply and listening de to deeply to people who, whose view on life is vastly different than your own. Um, and that is something that in our Western culture, in our modern culture, and certainly in our internet culture, we are not used to listening to people who differ from, with our, from our beliefs so radically that we sputter into incomprehensibility. Um, we generally, on the internet, seek out the things we want to hear because we want to hear them, not necessarily because we want to be challenged and confused. So if you, like perhaps Winnie was, are challenged and confused by Mistress Oidas's radical nonviolence, welcome to the world of radical nonviolence. That's what it looks like. It can be confusing. Um, <laughs> Winnie would also like to know a time frame on Tony's cephalorectal extraction um, soon. In six, seven chapters? Maybe. Sometimes I can't count. Moving on to small town girls questions. Will the published version of this still be called Loki of Midgard? Well, you know, that really depends. Um, if I have any say in it, which you would imagine I would, but if an editing team makes a really strong push and it sounds reasonable and logical and it feels right, I could see having the name changed. Um, and so it depends if I'm able to publish traditionally through a large publishing house or a small one. Um, or if I just bite the bullet and decide to self-publish on Amazon. It really depends. Also, Small Town Girl would like to point out that four books in a trilogy does not a trilogy make, and there are other words for this. She went ahead and looked them up for me. A quadrilogy, a tetralogy, and a quartet. And given the subject matter, we could even go for saga. Um, I'm leaning towards saga because it seems like the third book, The Meddler, might not be two books, it might be three. So we'll see about that. And then Always the Same would like to ask, why isn't Loki helping Darcy with her nausea? This is a really similar question to one that I think Winnie posed last time. It might have not have been Winnie, sorry. Um, and the thing about Loki, the one thing, no, there are several things. He's got some serious control issues. Like he does his best, he's not a bad guy, but everybody's got some problems. Everybody's got some issues. And controlling his environment is definitely one of Loki's. Controlling the people in his environment is definitely one of Loki's. This is one of the reasons he doesn't have very many close friends. So, one of the things that Loki is determined to do with Darcy is honor her autonomy, which means that he's trying desperately not to be controlling, even though that's kind of his tendency in life because he is the master of chaos. And you'd think being so chaotic, he wouldn't be controlling. No, it just means he doesn't plan. So, there's an autonomy thing going on. There's also some cultural stuff that hasn't been blatantly pointed out, but may bubble to the surface eventually. Um, and there's some cultural assumptions that each one are making. Oh, hello, little black cat. Susan has come. You can see her ears. Hello. And so 
when Loki makes the cultural assumption coming from a culture of warriors, as he does, that one does not give aid until one is asked to lend aid because one does not insult a warrior's capacity to bear pain. I know, I know, she's not a warrior, but this is like one of the basic assumptions of their culture. Um, he does not want to insult his wife by presuming that just because she's mentally complaining about nausea, that it is more than she can bear and more than she wishes to bear. Because the Loki has heard plenty of people complain in their heads. And on the outside, they are presenting a strong and perfectly fine front. And he doesn't go asking them either. Granted, he's not married to them, true. But it's, it's, he's making some cultural assumptions there. And meanwhile, Darcy is also making cultural assumptions. And the cultural assumption that Darcy is making is that if you see someone in pain, you offer help spontaneously. And if you don't offer help spontaneously, it's because you cannot give that kind of help spontaneously. So you see they're making exactly contradictory assumptions, which is what happens when you assume. Um, and then the final thing about Loki not helping with the nausea is that Loki can't help with her nausea. Eh, he could take her to a healer. They could get some tokens. They could, you know, they could make it happen. Um, but Loki's crap at healing. He can do exactly two things to a human body that fall into the realm of healing. He can reduce swelling because that involves being icy. And he can make people vomit which is all about the spiritual, emotional, physical cleanse and letting go. And he's really good at letting go. It's one of his personal capacities that is really quite high. And that's all he can do. When Thor, way back when, in The Crown Prince was teasing him about setting a bone badly and being crap at healing magic, he was not just being an older brother. He was being really blatantly honest because Loki's crap at healing. Um, but she does have her own personal healer, Borgild, who's also her shield mistress and an assistant, and she's never really utilized her. Why? Because she hasn't really thought about it. And because Loki hasn't pointed it out to her because he's waiting for her to ask for help. So those are the questions that we have uh, this week. This week, I say, like I do this weekly. Um, you can look for an update of Loki of Midgard tomorrow afternoon. I'm very excited. Uh, the next chapter will be up on archiveofourown.org. And that's all I got. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.